Welcome everybody, happy 2024, and welcome to our second year of Art Journal Snack. So excited to start this next year of this process with you. Some of you have been along for the whole ride, and some of you are brand new to this practice. This is something that I've been doing for decades, and I'm just thrilled to have so many of you joining me in this in this really meaningful way of documenting your life and um, exploring your creativity in a way that you can carry around with you. So we have our new official Art Journal Snacks journal. Uh, you might notice that the pages are a little bit thicker, and the paper is also more of a bright white. Now, for some of you, that might be super intimidating. You open this up, and you've got this very white page. But don't worry. We're going to have lots of ways for you to fill these pages with your life and with everything that's going on for you and um, with your exploration. and because I haven't said it in a while, one of the really lovely things about an art journal is that it has covers, right? And if something is really intense that you're working on or you don't particularly like it, you just change the page or you close the book and you come back to it later. And it's all safe there between the, the pages of your book and the covers of your journal. So remember that as you go through the next couple of months working on this one. And we'll go ahead and switch over to the downward facing camera and get this book started. Okay, so hopefully you've had a chance to unbox your journal and unbox your ephemera. I unboxed it, but I saved the start for you all today. So generally when I start a journal, I like to look at it and take a look through and just flip through the empty pages. For this one, I'm gonna go ahead and use the handy spot on the back you could put the start date and then leave it blank and put the end date for your journal, which is something that I usually do in my other art journals. I'll date it on the first page and then date it on the last page when I finish. But for this one, I'm gonna put the box name. So winter 2024. All right, so we have our journal, and I actually saved a little bit of ephemera just for this journal. It's been sitting on my desk for quite a while. Some of you may have seen this piece featured in, in Ephemera Hour. Um, so knowing it's half the battle, look in here for a how-to guide. And I just thought that this was the perfect thing to introduce into a journal. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue it on there, and then we'll get started. So long time Art Journal Snacks folks know that this is my absolute desert island favorite adhesive. We've been playing with a lot of different adhesives throughout the Art, Snacks, Art Journal Snacks journey. This one is my number one adhesive. I don't go anywhere without these glue sticks. I take them with me in my pockets, in my purse. I have one in my car. I have a bunch in my desk. They're always around. I have like four others on my desk right now because these are the best glue sticks. What I love about them is they really stick and they stick down a whole bunch of different things. They don't get as mushy and sticky as some other glue sticks do. And they really do a nice permanent hold. I also find that they don't have that problem that can happen with wrinkled paper quite so often. Okay, so we're gonna set that aside. And then one of the other wonderful things that we got in this box is a set of crown barge crayons. And before we open it, I wanted to make sure that if you have not yet tossed your paper, that you open it up and see that there's actually a little bit of ephemera in here that you might want to incorporate into your journal. If you missed out, no problem, but I'm going to go ahead and do what this says. I'm not going to cut on the dotted line, though, because I, I really like that little piece. So I'm going to save that, and I think I'll rip this out. And then I have a fun little thing I can use for swatching later. I also really like the, the star thing here that's about the UV rating, but um, in my head it's also about like giving colors stars. So like if you had to choose what your favorite colors were. <laughs> so um, something that can be kind of helpful with a, a thick piece of ephemera like this is to just peel away the back 
This is also going to give you something that's a lot nicer to stick in because this will take the glue stick really well. So I know that quite a few people have been doing this on their first page where they have their journal, they open it up, and maybe that first page has all the different materials. They can kind of have a record of everything that's in it. So we got two of the graph stone pencils, a 6B and an HB. If pencil numbers are new to you, the HB is more of a standard pencil. And the 6B is a lot softer. So you can see how much bolder that line is when you put the next to each other that way. It also feels a lot softer on the page. And then the graphite from that one will move around a lot more. This is the same thing. If art journaling is new to you, you will get messy, and that's just fine. <laughs> so we also got the dual metallic brush pen, and I will have to say in the chat which color you got. I have to tell you that this pen was the number one sought-after pen in one of the hospitals where I worked as an art therapist, and the individuals there would absolutely go wild for these because as you can see, the color goes onto the page so beautifully. It's, it's a, a real brush pen, meaning that it really feels like a brush. And then it's got just the right amount of shimmer to it. And if you want more, you just pump that in and get more pigment. One of the things that we used to like to experiment with these is to just keep brushing, brushing, brushing until it kind of gets a little more dry. So you can try that out and see how many how many brush strokes can you make before it gets dry. Okay. So another exciting thing that we got in this box are the quick art pens and a couple features that I wanted to show about these. First of all, when they come out, they have these little black things on them, which you can just pull off. And who knows, this might come in handy later. So something to see about these is this little spot right here, which right now you can see is black and there's no end coming off. But when I click it, then I see the color there. I can see that the pen is deployed. And these have a really nice fine line to them. They make that very satisfying marker sound on the page. And I uh, have a kind of a wild story about these. I have another set that I had gotten to test them out for you all. And I had them in my bag and my whole cup of coffee spilled inside my backpack. And these were just fine. They survived the coffee spell just fine. I can't say the same for some watercolors, but these did just fine, which is um, a big relief. The other nice thing about them is there's no lid to come off, which means that you can have a marker in your bag and not worry about the, um, the lid coming off. And then all of a sudden, you have a big black ink stain somewhere you didn't want it. Aaron, we got a question in the comments about one of the items. Uh huh. Uh, from Sherry, um, should we take the plastic wrapping off of the graph stone pencils, or is it meant to be left on? Great question. So it kind of is a matter of choice. As you may have seen in the menu, one of the things you can do with these is break them into smaller pieces, because then you have a lot more of a graphite surface. So if you like to do rubbing from like monuments that you pass or rubbings of leaves, then you would want to break it and then take the plastic off of that part. It's like peeling the wrapper off of a crayon before you do a rubbing. So if you don't want to do that, the nice thing about leaving the plastic on, and you can sharpen it with that plastic on and it will stay put. Um, one nice thing is then you'll know which one is which. Although as you can see from the mark making, you should be able to tell pretty quickly. 
but that's where the label is, is on the plastic. So it, it's really just kind of a matter of choice. You could also break it in half here, peel the wrapper off this top part, and then use the bottom part normally with um, a pencil sharpener. So matter of choice. And by the end of the box, we probably will all have peeled our wrappers off and be using it in all sorts of messy ways. All right. So um, a note about the crayon de arche pens or crayons, um, you can put these in other pins if you wanted. But one of the nice things about this is this little piece of foam, which seems kind of silly, but what it does is um, keep that end from banging against the other side of the pin. So it's just kind of a, a nice little, it's also a good kit that can travel around with you pretty nicely. You've got some stickers in it too. So for sticker lovers, you've got some extra little stickers. They could go on the outside of the container if you want. I'm gonna put those stickers aside. And then yellow. So some things to experiment with as you're using it are, do I like to use it just like a crayon? Do I like to use it and then do a wash? And we'll play some more with this. So do I like to put some water down first? And then make marks into the wet paper. So the nice thing about this new journal with the thicker pages is you can really get even messier than we did before, right? Even more saturated with water. And while we have that little wet part there, I'm going to go back to the click art pens and show you that these can also mark into like a damp page, and then you get a little bit of a softer line. So maybe some of you are like internally screaming right now. No, Erin, don't put marker into wet paper. But I'm uh, definitely not a purist when it comes to my materials. I'm a very heavy mixed media artist, and so. I do like to mix things because I love seeing what happens, right? This is kind of faded and feathering, and then we go back to having these nice clean lines with this. That's a satisfying tip. Let me get some of these things out of my way. And I'm going to switch to another version of this same journal. This is one I've been working in, but it is the same paper. Because I wanted to do what we often do with our materials, which is to try one material three different ways. So I set up a little page here for us. And I think that we will experiment with the metallic brush pen. So this might seem like a tool that you can only use in one way, right? Like, okay, it's a metallic pen. What can we really do with it? Right? And so, of course, the first thing we can do with it is really get a lot of coverage. And you can See now where I haven't pumped that end at all, and so now we're starting to get more of like a dry brush effect. So if you were after that more dry brush effect in your journal on a certain page, you might go to another page and do this where you've gotten a lot of the pigment out and then you're left with more of a dry brush. So again, this is kind of not necessarily how the tool was intended to be used. The, the kind of feature of it are these sparkles and the very juicy pen marks, but there are other ways that you can use it that give you kind of a different voice with the same tool. And then the lighter you are with the brush on the page, the more dry brush effect you get. Okay, so that's one. Then we'll pump some more into this.
And then another way we can do this is really exploring what are the ways that I can make very thin lines and then explore how thick can I make the lines, trying different holographic mark making with this tool. One thing to try if you're doing this, if you find that your bristles are kind of coming apart at all, just twirl it as you're drawing and they'll group themselves back together. And hot tip, that trick also works with a regular brush. So sometimes we're just like painting in a straight line and we're like, ah, my brush is all messed up. But if you try twirling the brush as you use it, a lot of times you can get those bristles to go back together. Maybe not if you have like acrylic paint encrusted in the face of the brush, but if the brush is otherwise in good condition, you should be able to do that. Yeah. So see if you can fill up like a whole area with this idea of going back and forth between thick and thin lines. And almost get down to just barely visible little tiny lines. <laughs> so the tool can really yell and it can whisper. Okay. And then the third thing that we can do with this is um and just hot tip the the top will go onto that end, which is kind of a good thing to know, sitting here clutching it, <laughs> but it will go on to the end of your brush, which is a nice thing to know about. Um, the third thing that you might explore is like, how could I incorporate these things together to do one image? Right, so exploring that thick and thin, maybe start to make the shape of the tree. Has like thinner lines where the branches turn into smaller little tendrils and thicker lines down at the trunk of the tree. This is one of those one of those art tools that's kind of puts you in a little bit of a trance as you use it because you're looking at the sparkles and you're looking at the way that the fluid medium is working on the page. And yet it's not messy, right? So one of the things that's kind of interesting about this tool is you do get the kind of the kinesthetic or the physical feel of painting and yet there's no water to spill. It's a single step process. You're not dipping it into paint and then washing it off in water. And so there are ways to kind of scratch that itch of painting without having to carry painting as I put it. Which when you're art journaling is especially good. A lot of times we think about this being a practice that maybe goes out in the world with you and not everybody can have paint at their desk, right? Not everybody can bring paint with them on an airplane. Some of us do. <laughs> but uh, this is a way that you can travel with supplies that get you that experience. Of paint. So starting to overlap some of these lines and let them build up maybe more of a more of a tree. And then we're planting this tree in the ground. And then what we're going to do with this is take a brush 
an experiment with picking up a little bit of the pigment from the brush pen. This is just plain water that I'm using. You can see that it will move around a little bit on the page, just with water on your brush. Suddenly, our tree has branches full of leaves. So, as you're doing this, as you're experimenting with using a tool in three different ways it's good to kind of have a, a little bit of a dialogue going in your mind of like, how might I use this in the future, right? Where would this dry brush technique serve me well? And where might I want to have a page that's this very beautiful calligraphic thick and thin line? And then where might I want to experiment with maybe adding some water? You can see as I'm continuing to add the water, how there is a little bit of separation of color in this. So it almost looks like I've used more than one color, right? The areas where there's a lot more of that glitter staying put, it looks a little bit more blue. And then where I'm thinning it out with less of the glitter, it looks a lot more green. And I know some people maybe got different colors. So same thing there, notice what color comes straight out of the pen, and then what happens when you touch it with it. Now, if you're just itching to add some different things to this, you absolutely can, but it is kind of a nice practice to stop and use one material in three different ways and see what happens. I'm gonna set that one aside so that this can dry, and we'll revisit it again towards the end and see how See how that's dried for us. But we'll go back to the new journal now and put to a new page. Okay, so this might be one of those things that you've experienced where you've got a new journal and you're feeling a lot of pressure. Like, how do I start this? What should I do? Okay, how do I get this page started? And one way to do that is with collage. So uh, since this is the beginning of a new year, I had found this um, cutting out the magazine. It was, it was real estate magazine, um, but I saw the wishing you a happy new year and the firecracker. I thought that was kind of a good one to open the journal with. So if I am gluing something that's going to go across the page very often, I'll fold it first and set it aside. And then I'll cover that whole page with glue. I get my text on there. We have a little bit of time before it sets. Make sure you put it where you want it. There we go. So then that page is all the way glued down. Then I'm going to open it back up and I'm going to back up that fold a little bit so I can get glue on this first part. You took a close look there. You could see some of the property around my place <laughs> sold for lots of money. <laughs> okay. So sometimes I'll decide that I'm going to cut this off later, um, the top part, so that I can play with a little bit of a fun lap. 
So I'm going to go over to my, here's what I've got in my ephemera envelope. And I like to, of course, I know what is in all of the ephemera envelopes, but I never know what I specifically will receive. Right? So it's always kind of a moment of discovery for me as well. Because even though my hands put these all together, uh, I, I never know which envelope is going to show up in my CO box. So here's what I got. And you may have discovered that if you kind of pull at this paper a little bit, some of them are thicker than others, and some of them will actually separate apart. It's kind of this beautiful onion skinish tissue paper hybrid. So that's a strong candidate to maybe go on to this page because the color seems very similar. But let's see what else I thought that might be, might be good. I mean, since this page is about a new year, it might be good to incorporate this line post-it note. And then I got a page that you would not believe how many layers of altering went into making these pages for you all. So mine is from a chapter about children's art abilities, but I really like this part right here. Looking forward to using that. So another candidate for this page would be this very shiny sparkly paper, but I think I like the warm tones better. And again, another candidate for adding on this page about the new year would be this, but again, I think the warm tones are going to be a better choice. And then that's kind of interesting to me. So I'm going to keep that one out for the time being. So we don't often think about using glue stick with tissue paper, but this glue stick, because it's not super sticky, meaning like it's not squishy, <laughs> it actually works really well with, with tissue paper. And this is also a thicker tissue. And so a thing you can try, instead of putting it down evenly, kind of intentionally wrinkle into it, almost like um, with fabric, right? When people are doing ruching and fabric. And you get these really wonderful textures that you can play with later. And this one has things that I feel like we have a little bit more to fill in here. This is something I've been talking about a lot with people is saving all those little bits that you cut off because you never know when or how you might want to use them. So when I'm journaling, I will have like a little pile of the things that I've trimmed off they might be useful. But then, of course, the question is, but Erin, how long do I save all these funny little scraps? And that's kind of up to you. <laughs> and I guess up to the scrap, right? If it's a really cool scrap of some kind of fabulous paper, I would recommend holding on to it a little longer. But if it's just kind of a, a random piece of magazine edge that's not that interesting, then I would say, hold on to it while you're working on that page. And then if it doesn't find a home, maybe, maybe you don't need to keep that. So you can see how something, even just like a tissue paper, can start to get almost a little bit of a relief, a little bit more structure. So for those of you that got pieces that look like this, with funny black and white images that look like they're from a book, they are from a book, and they were from a book of metal sculpture. And that took the form of wire sculpture. So some of you may have gotten some things that look like pencil drawings, but they're actually they're made of wire. For this, I'm not really sure. It almost looks like wire onto a wood background. 
but it's going to be just the right thing to break up. You see where this line is, where the edge of the collage paper is? And it'll start to break that line. The only other place I thought I might put it is right in the center of that firecracker, which I do kind of like. I like the idea of that. I have kind of a decision to make. So I could put a couple of of lines there that would be about whatever the explosion of the new year is. <laughs> but there's something about this that tones it down a little bit. It's not, this is pretty bright. And this darkens it just enough. So, oh, done. See, this is the, the danger of ephemera, right? Because then you turn it over and you're like, oh, but that was really interesting too. <laughs> Don't tell your uh, office manager or HR manager that this is where a little bit of uh, use of the copy machine at work might be a good idea. If you fall in love with both sides of a piece of ephemera. I mean, I suppose you could take a picture with your phone, but photocopies are pretty nice. So I like how that looks, but this is pretty cool, like a cool gray, and everything else on this page is pretty warm. So I'm gonna use the softer of the two gas pencils. And it almost looks like using like silver pigment, right? This graphite is so rich on this page. And it's gonna accentuate those wrinkles and start to hide a little bit where the edge of the collage is and where the tissue paper begins. I think I'm going to hold on to this right now because this is doing something that I'm not sure I want to introduce something else into it for the time being. I am going to trim that top now, though. As my, as my mom always says, there's no mistakes in art. So a little bit of that page ripped away, but that's fine. It's just another opportunity to extend the graphite a little further. No mistakes in art. Okay. So we'll turn to the next page. And I, since I have a little bit of this tissue going over the edge, I'll show something that I really love to do in my art journal that helps get that thing that we're all seeking, that wonderful art journal edge, <laughs> the side view of our art journal. So if you have paper that overhangs, especially this long edge, it's kind of nice to just glue it over onto this next page. And then you're starting the next page from a little bit of a friendlier place, meaning it's not another two blank pages that you have to figure out what to do with them. So this is what happens with graphite. <laughs> Luckily, uh, one of the things that that I very often keep near me when I'm making art or if I'm doing a workshop is um, <laughs> so I use dog training pads on the surface and then unscented baby wipes to wipe the hands off. Because then you can just keep going, right? You don't have to stop and get up and wash your hands. You can wipe your hands off and keep going without 
smearing graphite all the way across the page, which isn't a bad thing, but you know, it is just a thing. Okay, so in your menu, every time if you're new to our journal snacks, there will always be a bonus prompt of some kind. And if you feel like you want to keep your menu all in one, you don't have to do it this way, but we do always make it like a little cutout coupon. So you can do the prompt without cutting it out, but it's kind of fun to cut it out and put it directly in. And selfishly, I love when you do that because I love seeing this featured in each of your art journals in some way and seeing what you make around it. So this is a prompt that you could do at any time through your journal, but kind of a nice one to do in maybe your first or second session sitting down with it. So the prompt is set a goal for this journal. By the end of this journal, I will. And it just gives you a little spot to write, but that doesn't mean that what you do or what you write has to stay in that little place. By the end of this journal, I will. Take more time to rest. So that's my goal for the end of this journal, that I will be working fewer 12 or 15 hour days <laughs> and really uh, take time for rest. You know, you all know I take a lot of time for art, but taking time for art is different than like really just stopping. Sometimes what you write ends up feeling kind of tender. And so sometimes what you'll see me do is I'll write something and I'll cover it and I'll obscure it in some way. And again, this is one of those things that I really love about art journaling is you really can't plan how your phase is going to go. You know, you can have an idea, maybe you have a prompt that you're starting with, but Sometimes it goes in, into places that you weren't planning. But sometimes the material does something. That shows you that maybe you're a little ambivalent about that goal. <laughs> I think it's funny that it was hard for me to write, take time for rest. <laughs> So then thinking about what your goal is and this whole big page that you have here, you have a lot of different ways that you might play with that. And this kind of depends on you. Sometimes goal setting can be helped out by having a plan for how you will achieve that goal. So this seems like a good spot for that line to take it. Another thing that you can do with the Sandash crayons is dip them directly into water. So I have a little water here, and I'm just dipping it in and then drawing with it wet. And so, again, this is just such a great journaling tool because you don't have to take around a bunch of brushes if you don't have room for that. Brushes are also sometimes complicated to travel around in the world with. But I've been places sometimes and had. Um, like a bottle of water, and I dip something like this into the lid of the bottle of water or into the airplane, <laughs> airplane leftover ice in the cup. 
you know, a, a traveling art journal has to adapt, right? <laughs> so what I'm doing now is helping this piece of ephemera, this little post-it with the lines, kind of disappear onto the page a little bit. So that the hard edges of the original piece seem like they're growing out of the page. Another way that you can do that would be to take the line and continue it. And then maybe the line stops being a straight line after a certain point. Hey, Aaron, I got two things. Number one, we're about halfway through this live stream session. And then number two, Patricia in the comments says, can you go over again some ways to handle a large piece of ephemera that crosses the fold? Yes, absolutely. I have another piece of large ephemera that I can put into a page. So you, I'll, I'll show you a different way to do it. One more line here. <clears throat> Okay, so now you have kind of this interesting creative place, right? You have these very structured lines, and then you have these lines. And one thing you could play with is like starting your letters really big and then letting them get smaller and like having the letters fill the space that you created for them. And then this part is maybe a more ordered list, something to think about. I'm just going to add a little bit more. Of this yellow color. So I'm going to go to the click art pen now, which is kind of in between in its yellow. We have the art journal snack orangey yellow here, one of the colors that we've been using. And then the yellow of this click art pen. And then the yellow of the water soluble crayon. It's kind of a little bit of a gradient together. It's interesting because the crown to arch here, the orange is actually closer to this color. All right, so one more thing. I want to blend this spot right here. There we go. I'm going to set that one aside. And go back to the other one. Okay. If you're wondering about this little guy in there, there's a, a live stream up on Mix. You can see that is about putting that little guy in there. But here's a good example. Here's a piece of ephemera that definitely can't fit on one page or the other. And so there's a couple different ways you could do it. You could set this piece of paper aside, cover the whole back, and then glue it on. But I find that for me, um, if I'm wanting it to sit in a certain place on the page, right, and I might turn it around a little bit and decide what I like best. And I actually like this best. But this is a more complicated thing because there's like less of the page, less of the collage paper on each side of the journal. So I really like to do that fold first. And then I'll glue that whole side. And then before I set it down, I know that this paper is going to be on both sides of the fold. So I'm pushing pretty hard, not too hard. You don't want to like jam a bunch of glue into the crease of your journal. And then I'll put it in. So I'm like inserting it into the fold. And then this side has the glue on the whole piece. So I'm going to soften that down. And then I 
even though this one is partially glued down, I'm going to peel it away a little bit so that I know I'm getting a nice, even seam of glue on this whole piece. Now with some paper, and you might notice this, like with old book pages or old magazine pages, when you do this, you saw me run my thumb down that, that center seam, the center of the book, it might tear. Is that the end of the world? Nope, you can do something with that, right? You can make that part of the design. But um, there's just a thing to know that, it, that if you're running your thumb down the center and it's becoming more fragile paper, it might tear a little bit. Okay, I'll show you one more thing with regard to this idea because we have some of the paper that you receive in your ephemera pack is pretty thick. This is pretty thick paper. So again, you can kind of experiment with, I wonder if I can pull this in half, right? You can kind of pick at it a little bit and see if there's a way to separate this paper into two halves. And some of the paper in some of the boxes, that might be the case. Otherwise, use the same thing, but just get much more of a tight core, a tight fold. See, that's pretty tight. And then it will fit into the gutter of the page. The same thing here. See how this pulls away? Before I stick this down, I'm going to show you one of the problems that can happen. So if you don't get that all the way into the fold of the page and it comes across and then you have this gap here, see where there's, a, there's that space in between where the paper is and where the folded book is, it's going to always buckle and come up. Um, sometimes that's just annoying, right? Sometimes what happens is if you do stuff on either side of these pages, it'll actually pull everything else out. So you do want to try to get that as much as possible into that gutter of your page. But now you can already see that this is making this book pretty thick. Okay, so don't expect your art journal to lay flat after you've played with it for a whole quarter. It's, it's just not going to. And that's one of the wonderful things about art journaling. One of the things that's really fun to enjoy about, about doing this process. Okay. So we're gonna go back to this interesting page of something from architecture. Because one of the requests that came in was about um, playing with pattern and how to do that, like how to play with um, pattern and um, some different strategies for building patterns into your page. And so this one already has this nice kind of striping, color blocking thing happening. And a great thing that we can do with these click art pens is start to make structures. And this is in one of the pieces of paper as a ruler. Of course, you could use a regular ruler. Sometimes this is a good thing to do if you're not really sure what else to do on your page, is to just start to add some lines. And then I'll encourage you to do something that depending on when you grew up, you might have been scolded for as a child, which is to color outside the line. <laughs> because this is your art journal after all, and you can do whatever you like in it. So I'm going to switch to another color of quick art pen. And I'm going to think about just filling a few of these shapes with more lines.
one more over here. You might notice I'm doing something with my pinky of my fingers that helps me to stabilize my hands for drawing lines. See how it's kind of like a kickstand for the rest of my hand. And then since these are water-based, this is where the outside the line part starts to come in. So I really love to put really straight lines into something I'm starting to make a pattern. And then I come in with a paintbrush and I seem to mess it all up. But what it's doing is making it less um, predictable and a little more expressive. Again, the yellow and orange seem to be the color of the evening for me. <laughs> I wonder if you're all playing with the same colors or if you're exploring different ones, but they seem to be the colors that are coming to me this evening with the different ephemera that I've got. But it's also got this nice gray, so we're going to pull those pencils back in here too. So I really like to go back and forth between more geometric lines, more controlled lines, and the more expressive mark making. So what does this become, right? So this page might become a spot to write. And that's where one of the really great things about this particular box is you've got a really good range of tools for journaling that because you have the more expressive tools, you have tools that are a little bit more controlled. And even with the pencils, this is the HD, so you can see I can get more fine lines here, more controlled lines. And then I can switch to the six. I'm just going to put a lot more graphite on that page. So then I have this spot over here that maybe later becomes a place to write. And this is something that I really like to do for myself when I'm journaling. I don't journal sequentially in my journals, as you may be observing. The journals themselves are sequential, but the pages might not be. Meaning sometimes I have multiple pages that I'm working on at once and I'm going back and forth between them. And then other times I'll sit down and I'll finish a whole page all in one sitting. And I I know some people have strong feelings about journals being stated and one page follows the next. And if that's you, that's totally fine. I would just really recommend though that sometimes that means you have to stop for a long time while something dries. I really like to give myself the freedom to switch pages and switch materials and come back to it later. I'm gonna set that page just over here for a minute and dump out what else I got in my little ephemera. maybe there's something in here that I really want to use. So this is kind of cool stuff. This is glass bean paper. So you can feel it has a different feel and different sound than tissue paper. I've given you all your own little palette that you could decide how you wanted to do this. Maybe you do the colors of what you receive in this box, or maybe you put it down and decide, I'm going to represent all the colors of my day today. And fill up each place. Have a little 
dictionary. Oh, this is our dictionary. So I, I'm, I live in the middle of like ranch land and vineyard. And when I got home tonight, someone was, I don't know if he was shooting something or shooting just to test out his gun, but it was a little bit of this hair trigger and um, hair splitting <laughs> and hair raising, hair or astonishment. Um, oh, but I've got hammock on this other side, and that's kind of a, a fun thing to maybe make. And then you got some yoga poses. That's a favorite pose of mine, so maybe I'll do something with that one. Some little odds and ends. Oh, and this paper. Okay, I'm glad I opened up that ephemera because this paper definitely wants to be on this page. Because this is kind of glowing and this has this interesting glow to it. And hot tip on this paper that's got kind of a shine on one side, if you got some of that, it's matte on one side and white and then shiny on the other and kind of a vintage look to it. Um, what I found in testing it is that that will, that, that pigment on there will kind of move around a little bit. And we're gonna try it right now with water. Where I saw it happen was with um, matte medium. So you can experiment with that, but it did some pretty interesting things. We'll see if we can move it at all with the water. Yeah, a little bit. You see a little bit of the pigment moving off. Maybe I'll try it. I've got a little matte medium here. We'll make something fun messy. And we'll check in on that later and see if it did end up dissolving the page a little bit. You might be thinking, oh my gosh, Erin, that is a destroyed brush tip. Well, that's when it gets good. Because <laughs> it makes really great texture. I get a bunch of these containers and then I fill them with different fluid mediums and acrylic, and then I have an easy way to add some other media into the journal. I'm going to set that page aside for a test. And I wanted to show a couple other things um, thinking about this idea of pattern and texture. This is a totally bonkers art journal that I've been working in. Um, and thinking about this idea of just making marks for the sake of making marks and adding in patterns just because it feels good to do it, right? Just like putting lines onto paper just because it feels good to do it. And here's one that's more like drops, like raindrops. So think about taking a simple shape and then repeating it, repeating it, repeating it. This is something that we can do really well with a lot of the tools that we've gotten in this box. We might take the dark one. We just start with a simple shape, a leaf shape, or maybe you're drawing stars or hearts or something that's simple to just repeat over and over at different sizes. Can you use a stencil for something like this? Sure. But I find it's a lot more satisfying to do it with your just freehand. I feel more comfortable with a stencil. You can absolutely do that. Doing some line work. I 
as you're drawing with the click art pen, I encourage you to listen to the sound that they make. They do make a very satisfying sound on the paper. Another thing to kind of pay attention to as you're journaling is what are the other senses that I'm having that I'm experiencing as I'm doing this? Right, you're seeing what you're doing, but what else? Is there a sound? Maybe there's a smell. Because most of this stuff is unscented, but. <laughs> putting a little bit of water over top of this. You can see that the click art pen will mostly stay put, but it will move a little bit. And if you're wondering where the orange is coming from, there's a little bit on the brush, so that's why that's happening. And then there is always just a warm black, so there's a little bit of warmth that's coming off of it because of that. And then think about a different kind of a line that might go over that pattern. So the pattern is something that you created that, that repeated shape. And then doing a completely different kind of line over the top of it. So I'm using the edge of the of the crayon now to get a different feel. And you can see I'm putting a lot of water on this. So your pages will wrinkle a little bit. And again, that is part of it. <laughs> but it doesn't come through too much. And this is a lot of water. I probably am putting a lot more media onto my pages than many of you are. But I do encourage you to just try and see what happens. Because if you can't make a mess in your art journal, where can you make a mess? Let me add a little bit since that orange is coming through from the other page. I'm just going to add a little bit of that. I really, really love the way these colors are looking together. So this may be a winter box, but we didn't skimp on the intensity of color for you all in this one. It's kind of a, a lovely thing to do when it may be a stormy. Although outside my window right now, I see it, it's been pouring rain, but now there's some blue sky and some huge, huge puffy clouds. So there's still plenty of color to be had, even in the winter. a little bit of that dangerous thing that the marker into a wet page. So don't underestimate the fun of stippling. A lot of you know that um, my mom helps sometimes with the assembly of the ephemera pack is putting them all into the envelopes. And she's a trained medical illustrator, so I learned to love creating things just with little dots of black, black ink from her. And I also just really love the way that a more controlled pattern, like little tiny black dots, looks next to this more expressive line work, the new water-based work.
going to do a couple more dots here, and then I'd love to have some people share. And then if we have time, I'll share another journal that I'm working in right now. <laughs> All right, so I'd love to see if anyone would like to share. If you feel like sharing, um, go ahead and raise your digital hand. It's like uh, first one is Shelly. Go ahead and turn your camera on and unmute yourself. Hi, so I don't really want to share what I've been working with in my book, and, and I have so much ephemera everywhere, I've already lost what I wanted to show y'all. <laughs> um, uh, I may I may have to do it the next round, but um, I've been busy eating, but I got this really funny um, label on my bag, so it's, if you can see it, sealed for safety, and it has all these little squares, so when I pull it off, they'll come through. So I just like ripped the bag open like this because I didn't want to break the seals because I was like, oh God, those are going in my art journal. Yeah. But, and are... then this is the other thing that I wanted to show y'all. Erin, this is the coolest thing I ever saw. I got this as at an estate sale. Are you ready? Oh, good score. Wow. How many are um, in that set? There's, it's all but one. Wow, awesome. But what's really cool about this is look. Um, it, it's, you, it's really hard to see it. It's yeah. a crayon. Um, it's a white one. It's super, super old. It, oh, really? I'll have to take a picture of it and put it in, in mix so you can see oh, yeah. it. Close. But yeah, some of, so they're like, I need to do like a swatch test and see how the colors compare to the the new ones I got because they still work great. Oh, that's such a great find. But it's like it was an estate sale from an artist. So it was like um, Christmas when I went there. Yeah. <laughs> I had to leave a lot of money at home. So <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> we're all jealous. Well, thank you for sharing that. And I look forward to seeing how you incorporate that ephemera from your food packaging into your journal yes yes <laughs> great let's see uh you know what if you can't find the raise the hand button raise your uh, physical hand and I'll, I'll kind of skim the 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 meeting here and see if anyone wants to give me a second here uh g josie uh, here we go it's me i'll I'll just show one simple thing. I have to um, sure. find a brush to add water to it. I I have a chronic health condition, which explains my voice, but I find it fascinating how I seem to draw things, which is what Aaron probably wants you to do. Um, sort of what, what I'm dealing with. And so I'm riding the waves and right now I'm in a dip, but then unconsciously I found out that I was drawing waves and yeah. so i added the words in the air i'm writing the waves uh, i don't know which i need to find a brush to mix it up but i thought it's very interesting how unconsciously we seem to draw yeah is that's what i see in it um so i thought you would like to see that aaron yeah. thank you thank you for sharing that thank you for sharing that and it's it's such a good example of just doing the thing that feels like like it's the right thing and then it is right just trusting that your hand and your brain and your art materials will make the right thing happen thank you excellent thank you for sharing let's go to jill jill you can unmute yourself and turn on your camera hello i found this um really cool piece of ephemera yeah. in an art magazine and it it continues over and so I oh my gosh that's amazing 
Great photo. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I'm thinking because this goes underneath, I might continue it to another page and just have like this whole series of pages going back and forth. But um, I posted this one in the group, um, this less and more mm -hmm. list. Yeah. Um, that was a lot of fun to do. And that was a really fun way to kind of like break up that white page and kind of like just give myself some positive talk. <laughs> Thank but you. anyway, I, thanks. And, yeah, definitely share what happens after the snowboarder. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I will. Thank you. Excellent. Thanks for sharing. Let's go to Linda. Go for it. So I was able to use um, some of the pieces of ephemera and I just- A little blurry, just bring it a little bit closer. A little bit closer? Okay. Uh, maybe. I don't know. Turn it the other way here. I think it'll work. Yeah, there we ah, go. Ah, look at that. Better. And a little closer. So, anyways, so I used some of the uh, ephemera and I had this little pen thing I've been wanting to use a while. And I thought, well, a new journal is a perfect place to put that pen image. So I'm ready yeah. to get going. <laughs> Thanks. Great. I love how those drops are coming down on the side, too. Because it's a rainy day in South Bay. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes those um, ephemera bits are just waiting for the right spot to go. Fantastic. Thank you for sharing. Anyone else? Let me see. Their uh, physical hand up as opposed to your digital hand. Let's see. Let me, I'm going to start from the back here. Let's see and, and move my way forward here. I think I got everyone that wanted to share. So with that, I am going to throw it back over to Aaron. Go for it. Great. Okay. So I haven't really gotten the chance to show this journal at all, but I had a little journal that I just recently finished that I was, as I was doing it, I was thinking about this idea, this question of like patterns. Um, and so I did a lot of that in there. Many of you know Griffin, my little parrot. You might hear him in the background a tiny bit, but not so much as you used to. There's a little painting Griffin. And then here's this idea of just kind of repeating a pattern over and over and then building more on top of it. And these are leftovers from cutting things out. So this is what I was talking about when I said, if you're cutting something out, save those little cutouts because these ones ended up being really useful. Don't be afraid to incorporate your stickers from your food or your food wrappers, right? Like we heard about. And then here's another one of those pages of just repeating a mark over and over, making your own textures and patterns. And it's like a cutout that goes from one page to another. And then here's this idea I was talking about with taking one page and folding it around the edge. So that it goes on to the other page. And then I also cut the extra stuff off and made letters out of it. And here's a little bit more of that extra. So, you know, the the thing that you can do with all the ephemera that you receive is to hold on to it and keep using it and have those little bits kind of work their way through the journal. So that you can continue you know, the language or the dialect that starts on one page of your journal and then works its way all the way through. So this one I started, this was a really fast one. I started this on January 8th and I finished it on January 20th. So we'll go back to this page now that it's have a little bit of a chance to dry. So you can see that now the Grand Arche is, is set on the page a little more. I've got my hands going over the top of it and it's pretty much staying put. So now I can go actually back in with the click art marker. And the page is damp, but it's not wet. So I can add some more of this same patterning in here. So 
then you can just kind of continue this, these layers building up on the page. And I'll, I'll show this, I'm just kind of doing it off screen, but one of the other ways that you can use these, if you don't feel like pulling them out all the way, like if you're maybe on public transportation or you're sitting in the back seat or you're on an airplane, you can leave them in their box and use either a water brush or another brush and just use them almost like they're a watercolor palette. So I think the name of the game for this box and the supplies that you have is multifunctional. <laughs> Useful in a lot of different ways. We get a one more blank page here. We get some black paper and stick it in there so those pages don't bleed on to each other. So if you're afraid of the blank page, and maybe you've gotten through this whole live stream today and you're like, I just still don't know. I don't know if I can cover these white pages or gosh, there sure are a lot of white pages in this book. And am I going to feel that way every time I turn the page to another set? You can work ahead of yourself and just start to fill pages with material. So I'm really filling this with a lot of the six feet graphite just on one side. Then I'm going to turn back to this page. I'm going to take, you could take really anything, but I'm taking the back end of the brush. And then it transfers the graphite back over on the other page. And so I have this like hard, dark mark making, and then this softer, dark making, mark making that happens on this side. And so now you really have a starting point, right? Like you have something that you can start to explore. What's going on between these two pages and what else could I make that could connect these pages to each other? And then you also might explore what happens if I just fill up whole page so this is dry on dry paper you need a big messy brush and just get part of the page wet So the upper half of the page is wet, the lower half is dry. And I'm going to do that same thing where I turn the page. And use the back of the brush. Because this is wet, you have to kind of peel it apart. But look how fabulous that is. I mean, check out those lines. <laughs> and then again, this becomes something such an interesting starting point. You might not know what for yet, right? Like I'm looking over at my collage material and I have something that seems to be right in the right colors for this page. So this might get incorporated in in some way. But I would hate to cover up some of this. So I'm going to have to think about that one. Because we have the time, I'm going to show you one more thing that I've been holding on to. I just really haven't been sure where I was going to use it yet. This was packaging. It's some kind of wrapper packaging. You can see it's slightly perforated, but it's almost like its own little book. So I thought, like here, I can just pull it apart. 
and I thought it might be a neat little book within a book to put in here. So again, our trusty glue stick is going to come in so handy with this. And I'm warning you that now that you've tried this glue stick, you're never going to want to use another type of glue stick ever again. Because that had the perforation, it does come through a little bit. So with a page like that, you would want to put a little wax paper in there before you start that page. So I don't end up with something stuck together. There's a little more of that that I can use somewhere else. And actually, maybe this page will be where I'll put this little thing. And you'll have to stay tuned on this to see what ends up developing with that. <laughs> Looking good, Aaron. Hey. Let me just take a look at the chat, see if there's any other things I missed. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Rodney said, what do you do with the white decals in the Karandash box? I guess those are stickers, right? Yeah, they're, they're stickers, but look what you can do. You can kind of customize yours. So if you're in the habit of hanging out with other artists, Maybe you want to make sure that you know which one is yours. So if you put them onto your red tin, the white shows up. And then, okay, if you really want to get fancy, this one is kind of clear, right? So you could take, let me do this real quick, a small piece of paper. You could, of course, do this with a fun piece of ephemera with like an interesting word, but... I'm going to make sure that everyone knows this is my set. How satisfying are those clips on those clip art sets? <laughs> I'm going to cut this small. <laughs> and then I'm going to stick it right in the center of this little sticker. Then if I'm art journaling with other people and we all brought ours, everyone knows this is mine. I see someone in the in our group today who I might see later on. And uh, if we both bring our tins, we'll know who's is who. <laughs> I got a nod. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, I think that's that time. I want to thank everyone for joining us. Um, so I'm going to place the spotlight. Erin, any final words for this session? I think uh, happy 2024. Welcome to our second year of art journaling together. And I'm so excited to see how your journals evolve. Thank you for joining.